Oh, I didn't see you there. Come join me, won't you? Thank you. Hi, coming at you with another video. Uh, I was brainstorming recently about all the different kinds of aspects of musicianship uh, that were important for me. Uh, I covered a lot of topics and I'm going to be interviewing people and I'm already planning for season two. But something that I wanted to get across um, for this particular season, now reaching towards the end, is the importance of the gig, or as musicians like to call them, the zhizh. What's all that practice worth? if you can't perform. Uh, recent economic developments these days uh, have kind of uh, put a focus on people not having a particular job, maybe not even a career. Uh, they just go from gig to gig to gig and that's essentially what musicians have been doing for quite a long time. Incidentally, so have comedians. So what is a gig? Well, essentially, uh, in marketing terms, it's a way for a musician to be able to promote themselves and work their art. Uh, something that you gotta practice. Gigs is something that you're gonna have to try to work towards or conversely something that just kind of falls in your lap. Uh, gigs is something that you can uh, ruthlessly self-promote or maybe the promotion can be done for you. Gigs is where you get noticed. Gigs is where you can begin to snowball. Uh, gigs is where you can start attracting attention uh, both good and bad and uh, be able to make a name for yourself. It also means you can get money. Uh, my first gigs was with family. Uh, we were all musically talented and so for Christmas, um, even simple birthday celebrations, we would all get together and sing the song, Happy Birthday. We could sing in like six harmonies. Come to think of it, it also kind of helps that in Ukrainian when we sing Happy Birthday, there's like eight different versions of it. Actually, there's maybe about four, maybe five. Yeah, eight. Uh, school performances. Uh, back in grade eight, I played for the whole school in the gym with the guitar, my song Down by the River, which I co-created with friends from that grade. Lots of fun. Uh, other gigs, also school-oriented. In high school, there was opportunities to perform. Uh, being part of a jazz ensemble, uh, learning how to play songs and then playing them for friends at school. Um, basically just getting noticed, putting on a production, a show. Uh, you get popularity. So yeah, kind of like a high school mentality if you come to think of it. My good buddy Andy had his band perform at my school. That was a gig in the cafetorium. They caused a riot. My gig experience with music um, of the kind that I really like to do is quite varied because uh, I've worked with different bands and I've done uh, lots of different settings uh, in different cities and different countries. So first in Toronto with my buddy Tom we did Smoke and Mirrors and we played in pubs in Etobicoke. And pretty small venue stuff. Uh, popular hits uh, friends and friends of friends and family friends. Uh, thank you to my sister Larissa for promoting that. Awesome job. I would go to Battle of the Bands. Uh, I wasn't playing but I'd be supporting the acts that were there and those situations were kind of harsh because the promoter, not the promoter, the venue owner which was a pub demanded pay to play. So when it comes to pay to play the best thing to do is do a Battle of the Bands which is not a real battle but uh, you get several bands that all have hopefully separate but slightly joint networks and that way you can cross promote each other. And those sorts of gigs are kind of tricky because uh, he wants a guaranteed income because, well, he wants money through alcohol sales typically and door sales. And that's just a simple business tactic in order to get lots of people coming into a particular venue. Um, you have to spread word of mouth, you have to do little flyers, you have to uh, promote, promote, promote yourself. Um, emails, that became popular in the 90s. <laughs> yeah. 
90s. And um, email list now, it's social media, so you can do everything you want for free on YouTube. And uh, that way, just more marketing, more promotion. Having a, a press kit also kind of helps. But we'll talk about the press kit and the electronic press kit later. Um, my particular experience eventually uh, was doing my own promotion at karaoke because I'd be playing at several pubs that did that, but also uh, were venues for me to play my own. And there I met other musicians and um, did shows with them. Uh, for example, a buddy of mine said, oh, I can't make it, uh, uh, I'm uh, double booked, can you play a gig for me at this pub? And I said, sure, the Rosenthorn, I know it, not a problem. Set up the speaker, microphone, play. And of course, you've got your repertoire too. I like using music stands, so you get something nice and low, had a whole bunch of covers, some originals, boom, 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 boom. People like you, people get noticed, or people notice you, and everyone has a good time. And get paid. Another friend of me said, uh, can you play my buddy's wedding? And I said, absolutely, I can. And I didn't know anyone there at all. Uh, but uh, I knew that they were of a, a European ancestry. And so I pulled out some Italian songs and, and they loved it. Um, this is not your story, Camilo Ponziani, although I did play your wedding. Molto grazie, signore. Um, that is also like weddings, bar mitzvahs, and whatever else. I mean, the opportunities are there, know your stuff, and you can get gigs. Now, uh, for these gigs, you may have to kind of tailor your craft to certain ways. Uh, I once played at a martini bar, and so I had a very different set of music that I'd be playing compared to their competition just across the street where it was much more down to earth. And there I had a cool reputation so I can basically get away with playing anything. And the money was really, really good. I mean, they saw my dedication. I would play maybe about 12 songs and then take a five minute break, have a Guinness and then play another 12. The passion was here and here and here. And yeah, I had all the elements that I needed. If there's a stage, there's a stage. If not, you kind of make a stage. Uh, if there's a PA system, use it. If there is no PA system, you got to bring the PA system. So having that equipment really helps. Uh, and the awesome thing is, is that you get enough gigs, you can form a circuit. And the more you play, the less you kind of have to practice. If you got your ear to the ground and you hear stuff becoming popular, then pick it up and throw it into your set and then you become popular. That certainly helped. Um, I also was able to excel at my musicianship because I had an open ear and I tried different things and experimented and had lots of fun. And uh, eventually tried my hand at doing an actual musical, Jesus Christ Superstar, where I met even more people. Uh, I formed a band, uh, well, I joined a band, I should say, called Random Peace. And that was really fun because it opened me up to the whole downtown circuit. Cameron House, The Rivoli, they had Club 269. Um, downtown Toronto on top of the Hard Rock Cafe. Uh, we played Uptown. We played down Queen Street. And yeah, it's it was lots of, like it just opened up the whole field. Uh, Rancho Alaxo. Um, the one that's at Bathurst and Queen. What's it called? Ooh, Sneaky Cheese. <laughs> Sneaky D's, it's called Sneaky D's. <laughs> And you get to meet other bands, so it's like, you know, the next level. And there uh, are very different styles, so it's almost kind of like you got to do your thing and prove your worth. Never played at the Bovan Sex Club, but I've seen lots of friends perform there, and that was fantastic. Um, that place is still cooking and is uh, a good scene for underground. Um, Oh geez, uh, all these different places in Toronto, little niche places, kind of discover and then through your talents you can make popular. Um, that is of course if you're willing to put yourself into it because it can be a lot of work and sometimes, well particularly in this economy, it's, it's hard. Um, I've always found it a very interesting challenge and uh, approved my flexibility to be able to do things. Uh, it was by doing Club 269 uh, on top of uh, Hard Rock Cafe downtown in Young Dundas Square where my band The Thirst, my buddy Bo and Andy are just like, look at Adrian having all that good time up on the stage. He's really bringing the life to this party. Uh, we should form a band with him. What do you think? Yeah? Yeah. 
So they poached me essentially. Um, and then, oh geez, working with those boys was fantastic. Um, everything was coalescing musically for me anyways. Uh, vocals, playing bass, performing, uh, putting a PA system together, doing practices, barbecues during the summertime, multi-cottage jam fests. That became a yearly thing. And then my cousin, who used to live down in Florida, in Seminole County, said, we need a bassist. Do you want to come down and uh, check out this outfit? Because we're going to be playing for the Armed Forces Entertainment over in Japan and Guam and South Korea, and we need you. So of course I said yes, uh, asked mom, uh, finished university, asked mom, and she's like, go for it, have fun. And that was incredibly easy. So thanks, mom. Um, traveled. That was incredible. Still think back to those days in uh, the winter of 2007 going into 2008 and just like, holy cow, I was in Japan playing to the military on an Air Force base at, at a naval base at, at, at a mil ugh, next to next to Mount Fuji. Like, it was freaking great. That was absolutely an incredible experience. Being flown down from Toronto uh, to go to Florida, to go to this pseudo mansion, this McMansion with a beautiful pool and a limousine, and practicing, and then going across the world to play. And uh, wow, culture shock. It was so good. So good. I learned about per diems, uh, learned about travels, learned about jet lag. Uh, learned about sleeping on buses, uh, learned about foreign cultures and currencies and language, uh, the importance of sleeping and nutrition and getting along with teamwork and management and behaving and misbehaving uh, and not getting paid very much but having a great time and uh, taking photos, right? These are all elements and parts of the gig. Um, you go to different places and you got to respect uh, the um, mores or the cultural values and you get appreciation because you bring some of your talent and they show you appreciation. Now I have been to gigs where very few people showed up. I've been to gigs where the whole place is packed, um, like a captured audience. Um, I've had places where it was me and then more people showed up and it was a blast and I've yet to have a show where uh, it was really big, but then when we started playing, it fucking sucked and everyone just left. That could be very demoralizing. Yeah, I can I can just picture that. Just ugh, bad energy. And I suppose there's multiple reasons why that sort of thing would happen. Um, you're insulting the audience and they really don't appreciate it. Um, something happens environmentally and uh, a service like um, the pub or food or whatever, there's a fire. Um, uh, some other marketing emergency uh, that's unforeseen, some externality. Um, you have equipment failures. You've got power failures. Um, one of the band quits. <laughs> that's not cool. There was one time where Random Peace was playing and I couldn't get the ride from the far end of the city into downtown quick enough and so I arrived like two hours late to the gig and so we played deadline and that was a horrible day because I had a full day of university then had to uh, public transport back home to the suburbs and then go even further um, into a, uh, like a an industrial district where I had a job then from that job I had to take public transportation back home uh, and then take public transportation back into the city where the university was actually just maybe a few blocks down. It was horrible. It was just so bad. Transportation for gigs, so important. Um, uh, if someone's got wheels, like, uh, they're a godsend. It's, a, it's the chariot of freedom, of possibility, actually. That's more accurate. Charity of possibilities. Uh, kind of a joke. Uh, I got a, a sports utility vehicle. Uh, I actually call it a music utility vehicle because although I have used it to move sports stuff, I've used it also for a lot of music. What have I done since uh, Japan and South Korea? Um, Gig-wise, 
Uh, geez, I really focused on my career. Um, karaoke, uh, but that's not really a gig. That's more practice. And keeping the pipes warm. Um, well, let me see. Um, oh, okay, here's one. Uh, I had a career gig, um, traveling, and I ended up at a very, very, very small town, and that small town had a even smaller town <laughs> in the middle of nowhere, in the snow, <laughs> in the middle of Saskatchewan. <laughs> so if you take like <laughs> a square sheet and you have a tiny little dot, that's where I played. Um, I had my, um, uh, I still have it actually. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Mm, jur journal and music diary. When I was in Ailsham in Saskatchewan. Here we go, 24th of February, 2016. Dang, that was a really long musical hiatus. Here we go. Actually, it was the 29th of February, 2016. What is it now, 2022? Gosh, that's a long time ago. I rocked the Ailsham in uh, with their acoustic guitar on stage with Ashley Huff and friends as audience. Today, here is a list of what I played at Ailsham and why I have blisters. <laughs> Where calcis should be and will be again. Yeah, look at this. Boom, 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 boom. And I just pulled that out of my butt. And this is what comes with experience, right? Uh, being a musician um, and with my particular talents having things wedged in, I am able to play things like Running Down a Dream by Tom Petty. Easy. Play that funky music, white boy. Uh, Mississippi Queen. Nautical Disaster by The Tragically Hip. I Am the Highway, Chris Cornell, Audio Slave. Dear Mr. Fantasy. Uh, with or Without You, You Too. Sweet Home Alabama, easy. Space Oddity, Disarm, Sunshine of Your Love, White Rabbit. Bob Seger's Turn the Page. Uh, geez, hasn't hit me yet. Uh, Blue Rodeo, just like great stuff. Cinnamon Girl, Old Man, Patience, Push, Free Falling, Satisfaction, Don't Fear the Reaper, Every Rose Has Its Thorn, American Woman, Highway to Hell, Nothing Else Matters. Simple Man, Love Me Two Times by The Doors, uh, Radar Love, Golden Earring, Classic, Some Kind of Wonderful, um, Communication Breakdown, and Paranoid, and Hurt, and uh, working man, then yeah. rooster, uh, round here. Oh yeah, <laughs> voodoo child, crazy Mary, uh, house of the rising sun, ramble on, uh, sympathy for the devil, karma police, behind blue eyes, etc., etc. And then I remember after February, February, uh, March, April, I got a gig to work on cruise ships. Now, I wasn't there for the music entertainment, but I did meet people who were. And that in itself is a different kind of gig altogether because you're playing on a moving object, which is fun, kinda. Um, but uh, you're playing the same stuff over and over and over again. Like playing gigs like this once in a while is fun, but imagine playing the same things over and over and over again. Kinda wondered about that with uh, musicians who even have played their own stuff. Uh, that are promoting their own stuff like you're playing your music again and again and again and again and I kind of wonder do they get tired of that especially uh, if your music then becomes the crowds music um, you've influenced society in such a point and your fans to such a point where they expect you to play the hits where you want to grow as a musician and and you always have to return to the same songs um, Maybe I have to meet some much more famous people and ask them their opinions of that and hopefully get a straight answer. Um, if you're famous and you can answer it for me, please do. Um, but then going on to other stuff that I've done, uh, I actually was at one point it was with some friends in Hamilton in a Ukrainian polka band where we totally rocked it up and it was really fun. And conversely, here in rural Alberta, I was in, guess what, a country band, uh, but it was also hyped up rock country, so that was really fun. 
um, yeah, I still have it in me to gig. I uh, meet one of the locals who also knows how to play guitar, has got a bunch of equipment. I had, like, no instruments because I just was fresh on the scene, uh, but I really wanted to play music. Uh, bought myself uh, an electric guitar with an amplifier, um, played a little bit busking, made some coin on that, uh, get noticed and form a country band. Sure, I was open to learn the cultural milieu. And now I can say that I've been there and I've done that. Um, what's going to be happening in the future now? Ooh, well, I have been working on my own materials and um, recording and uh, meeting other people who have got their own amazing talents and uh, with a little bit of impetus I'm trying to keep that going so that I'd be able to eventually play at the theater that they have here in Athabasca. I could also play in the pubs because I've done two of them already. I can also put on a production inside um, some of the smaller venues, some have something intimate and interactive, something that doesn't have a large crowd because, you know, pandemic. I could also, once I have everything like recorded and mastered, uh, then put videos together like this, this right here. It doesn't have to necessarily be the space either but uh, something that I could promote. Uh, I could do stuff online now because the technology exists where I can just play and uh, do it live uh, at anyone's request basically and that way I could do more promotions and eventually get noticed. And if I have my press kit ready, particularly my electronic press kit where I've actually got what my goals are my experiences, my history, my styles, my moods, my themes, my, um, my milieu, uh, things that I would like to achieve, then that could be promoted online as well. And yeah, I can get more gigs. Uh, particularly if this economy opens up and I can start playing different parts, different cities. I've just got so many places where I'd be able to play. And uh, yeah, I am independent enough to be able to do a one-man show quite comfortably. If that one-man show can become maybe about three or four, um, include percussion, uh, include some uh, lights as well as sound, it'd become a bigger audiovisual experience and more theatrical, then I definitely got something. And if I really want to start expanding these ideas, I can then start planning a tour, uh, I'd be able to go from place to place to place because I know how to do it. I know that uh, there's a lot of marketing that goes in this sort of thing and promotion. And of course there's the who's who, there's the talking up, there's the talking down, there's the uh, application for grants and cultural events. And that way you get gigs, 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 and gigs. Anyways, I've labbed on long enough. Uh, thank you very much for paying all this attention to me. Uh, <laughs> there's reasons why I'm doing this. Uh, and hopefully you'll see me live sometime soon.